Okay, hey, welcome to the shop. Uh, we're working on a boat. Uh, today I've got a little project to do and I thought I'd turn this into a uh, little how-to video. I, I need to replace the end of this shore cord. This is our 30 amp, 120 volt shore cord. Uh, one of our shop loaners uh, went out on loan and came back with a little bit of burning on the boat end of the cord. So uh, we've got our new end. We just need to change this out. So uh, pretty simple little job. Great uh, DIY project for any boat owner. It's a handy skill to learn how to do this. So I thought we'd share it. Um, and like I said, it's a simple little job. And I think on the scale of difficulty, I would give this a one out of a possible six. So simple little job, uh, quick and easy to do. So um, I'm going to set the camera up for the bird's eye view and we will change the shore cord end out. All right, so here we are. We are uh, at a bird's eye view of our bench. Um, I went ahead and just uh, cut the end of my cord off here uh, with my big cable cutter. Uh, make it a little easier to handle up here on the bench. Now, if you were replacing a molded end like this, uh, you would just lop it off and throw that end away. Uh, you don't need this anymore. But in this case, uh, since I want to save the locking ring here and I want to reuse this uh, little waterproof boot because it's still in good shape. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the boot off, the ring off, and we'll toss that receptacle and put our new receptacle on our cord end. Okay, so first off, the locking ring. Um, the easiest way to get these off is to push them to one side and then shove them forward and just work it around and they will come off just like that. Now, these rubber boots can be a little problematic sometimes because this one's been on here for a few years and uh, it's very happy to stay there. It does not want to come off easy. So there's a trick for this. Uh, what I do is I get a small slotted screwdriver and very easily, so I don't damage my boot, slide it in just like that. Then a little soapy water and a squirt bottle. And we just put soapy water right in to this opening and then just work our screwdriver around the receptacle like that. Take it out and that boot should come right off. Just like that. Now, there's our receptacle, and uh, might edit this for time, but I'm going to take this apart just so I can look inside and see what kind of shape my receptacle is in now. This will be fun. Three screws and oh, and yeah, I, <laughs> I'd say this receptacle is uh, is done for. All right, so let's get a new one put on here. All right, so we've got our cable end cut off, and we've got our new receptacle. We're ready to start assembling this. Now, I like to put the boot on first thing straight away with a little soapy water just to help it slide a little because it's a lot easier to get this boot over this than it is to get it over this. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And now we can start cutting into our cord end to attach to our receptacle. Now there's a little trick to this because in here we have our conductors have to go into the receptacles here. Bare copper has to go into these terminations and we have a cable grip down inside of our uh, shell, of our receptacle, that is designed to grab the outer sheath of this cable and hold it so that if there's any tugging, we're not tugging on the terminations here. Now, if we cut back too far, well, and try to clamp this with our cable grip here, it's not going to grip it very well. We need to have that cut just right so that our cable, our copper goes into our terminations here and our cable grip grabs the outer sheath of this. And I'll show you a little trick I like to use to do that. So. 
I like to set my receptacle just like this. And then I can imagine that my copper is going to want to go in just right about where that screw is. And my cable grip is going to end right there where those screws are. So right there is where I want to cut the sheath. So, as always, sharp utility knife. And what I'm going to do here is just make very light, easy cut. And then I'm going to bend that cable over on the top of itself. And just being very, very careful. Just make a very light cut so that we don't get into the conductors inside. Just try to very easily skin that back. And after these cables have been sitting in the sun for a little while, they get to be just a little stiff. So it really kind of adds to the difficulty, but with some very light cuts, it'll pop right off. And there we go. And now we can get the fuzzy white stuff out of the way. ready to go ahead and get our receptacle put on. So I, uh, we've got our outer sheath stripped back to the point where we're going to grab it with our, grab the outer sheath with our cable grip down inside of our shell. And we've got enough wire sticking out here that we can strip it back and get it into our terminations inside our uh, receptacle in here. So a uh, little soap helps out everything. And we slide that on. Now, one thing, when, when we start stripping these wires here, um, one thing we have to do, and I did this off camera, but uh, I'll share it with you anyway, is when we cut this back, we have to cut back till we find clean copper. So this is my first cut. And you can see here, this is not good clean copper. The, the neutral's pretty good, but the, uh, but the hot line here uh, is not very well, doing well at all. So we cut a, about a foot off, get rid of that, and we come back until we see good clean copper. So let's see what's behind here. And there we go. Beautiful. Nice clean copper. <clears throat> now most of these receptacles will come with a strip a strip guide to show you how far to trim back. This is usually about five eighths of an inch. So that's what we're going to do here. We'll cut this, strip these back about five eighths of an inch or so. And AC safety ground. Favorite. Okay, so here we go. Now, on our receptacle here, you can see we the, these are color coded. So we've got uh, a little black ring for our hot. We've got a clear ring that will be for our neutral, and we have a green, which will be for AC safety ground. So we just get the wires into each one. <coughs> but first, let's just make sure that they are opened all the way, so that we're not trying to shove a wire into a closed terminal. And I like to. Just kind of bend the wire just a little bit just to kind of get it aimed straight and not on an angle. And we'll slide white into the white, black into the black, green into green. Just like that. And hold that joker in there. Tighten him down. My safety ground has escaped. And we push him in. And tighten him down. And our neutral. Push him in. And tighten him down. And I like to go back just one more time and go one. Two, three, and give it a pull. 
Okay, we're tight. And now we can just push our shell back up. And a little notch there goes with the notch here, and it should slide right together. And then we can go ahead and secure our screws here. And here. And here. And now it's time for our boot. Oh, excuse me, almost forgot. Cable grip, tighten that cable grip down so that when, if we pull on this, we are not pulling on the terminations inside here. Almost forgot that. All right, now to get the boot over this guy, there again, a little bit of soapy water. And it should slide right on. There we go. Now, our locking room. Now, if you've ever wondered, do I really need this locking ring? Yes, you do. Um, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But the same, well, without the locking ring, if we were to put our twist lock in, we lock it. Okay, it's in there, but it can still wiggle, and there's a lot of play in that, and it will come loose and start arcing, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So yes, the locking rings uh, can be a bit of a hassle to get on there, but you really need this. It's an important thing. So there again, a little bit of soap water on that, and if you start working from one side, it'll snap right on. Easy as can be. And there we go. Now we have our uh, cord end replaced. Okay, so that's our show. We replaced our uh, 30 amp boat end, 30 amp shore cord boat end on our loaner shore cord here, so she's ready to go back into service. Uh, one thing I, I personally like to do before I send these back out into the world um, is to just check and make sure that, double, double check, make sure that I got the polarity correct. Um, so uh, I do that with, uh, I have a uh, 30 to 15 amp adapter here, and I just plug that in there and uh, use my little three light circuit tester to check and see. Yeah, so so two, two lights uh, means my polarity is correct, and uh, I can actually go ahead and test the GFIs in the shop while I'm here, and let's see. Yep, <laughs> I gotta reset the clocks. Um, so yeah, this cord is good to go, and uh, she can go back out into service. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, if anybody's interested, uh, let me know in the comments, and we'll do a video about replacing uh, the 50 amp short cord. And um, other than that, uh, that's our show. So uh, keep working on your boat. Okay, so hey, here we are with the uh, bonus footage. Um, I feel like I should mention a product out there um, that can really help um, with the situation. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, I would uh, suggest look at the um, smart plug system. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can't uh, put a link to their website down below. Um, just to be clear, we're not sponsored by anybody. Nobody pays me to do this. Uh, but uh, I've been really impressed with the product and the first smart plug that I installed was uh, on my own boat and uh, I've been really happy with it. And uh, we don't see this uh, with that system. So um, I would encourage you, uh, if you're not familiar with the smart plugs, to um, go to the website and check it out for yourself and uh, make your own determinations. But uh, I, I've been really happy with their product. So um, anyway, that is in fact the end of this. So uh, we will see you next time.